Good afternoon, good evening, rather, for us, and it's morning for you. Welcome to Enlight Connections. Uh, we are just so excited to be here with you and get someone, bring them in to, to join you because we have a great message for you. Mm -hmm. Now, to my <clears throat> left is pa Pastor Terry Presley, mm -hmm. and to my right <clears throat> is, pa is uh, Prophet Merlin McGarry. And uh, I have to ask you to excuse my uh, sinus voice this, after, this evening, but we're going to jump right in this because we have quite a bit to share with you. I'm going to turn you over to to the prophet to read a prophetic word, a prophetic message that God has given to her. And I believe it was July the 8th uh, this year, 2022. Mm -hmm. So if you would, prophet, go okay. right ahead yes, and, and read the, 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 the message. Okay, this one is entitled, God is doing uh, spring cleaning in July. The Lord says, I am cleaning up my church I am separating the wheat from the tares because it will soon be harvest time. Only I know who the tares are mm -hmm. and I want them out now. They are growing up tall so I can see them. They are in disguise, but I know their names. I am calling them out one by one so that my church can expand so my church will be ready to reap the harvest, says the Lord. The harvest is plenty, but the laborers are few. I am handpicking my soldiers and preparing my army for battle, as the weapons of your warfare are not carnal, mm -hmm. but mighty in the pulling down of strongholds. They must come down, and they will come down. They will obey the voice of the Lord as I send forth my prophets and my angel army to rise above all principalities in the heavenlies and princes in their high places. So be alert, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is roaring like a lion, mm -hmm. roaming and seeking to and fro for those he can devour. And he will devour them, says the Lord. My soldiers must not break rank, mm -hmm. so know your place know your enemies and his strategies so you will not be a casualty of war or a spoil or pawn in his hand. His time is short as my great army expands and marches across this earth in victory, says God. O oh, death, where is your sting? O oh, grave, where is your victory? Where are my watchmen? Are you watching? Are you on alert? Are you ready? This, time, this is the time to be on your post, to warn and protect my people. Awake, awake, and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. I am giving out assignments, new mandates, new instructions, new orders, and even new posts. Not like the old, but new strategies because the old ones will not work on the onslaught that the devil is planning. Awake and hear, awake and listen, awake, receive your instructions, says the Lord, because I will feed them to you day by day, just as I fed the sparrow, says the Lord. Be ready, gird up, clothed and dressed as a true warrior, and let's go get what belongs to us. Let's go get our stuff, Let's go collect the bounty and reap my harvest, says the Spirit of the living God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Now, Amen. let's go back and look at this. I, now, for just clarity for, clarity for our audience, mm -hmm. what are the tares? What are the tares? The tares grow at the same time as the wheat in the fields. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a scripture verse in Matthew chapter 13, mm -hmm. it talks about the tares. I believe it's verse, uh, there's, there's, there's a few others too, even in Revelation. Right. So 1330. What, what it's going to say when you find it, I believe, mm -hmm. is that the tares are like the unbelievers. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the wheat 
are those uh, who are believers. Is that right? They're both believers. Well, I mean, you know <laughs> what I mean. Un those who have not uh, accepted. Obedient, yeah. They're yeah, not being obedient to the word of God. They have not accepted Jesus Christ, but that's good. Because mm -hmm. we want our Lord or Savior. to truly understand what mm -hmm. we're saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it also means that they, they look so much alike. Exactly. Mm -hmm. One is authentic and one isn't. Yes, that's but good. because they look so much alike, mm -hmm. that's why we can't uproot them early. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. Jesus comes back, he's the one that knows how to separate the that's two, right. but because they look so much alike. That's right, mm -hmm. that's right, that's right, that's very good. And it's interesting because when you do look at the, the scripture, you can do a study on this, it says that they grow together mm -hmm. and they're going to grow together until it's time mm -hmm. to harvest. Mm -hmm. And so when I read this, I'm thinking of the rapture. Oh, because really? when it's time, uh -huh, when it's time for the <laughs> well, yeah, for God for to come to for His separate. church, yeah, he, there, to yes, there's what the separation. I, I just wanted mm -hmm. our audience to know, uh, to mm -hmm. understand, because uh, everybody don't, well, mm -hmm. you know, right. what the wheat is and, and what the tares are. Mm -hmm. And I was going to say just quickly in the Amplified Bible, and I think in other versions it calls the tares weeds. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of comparing. Mm -hmm. the tears again to not being authentic but to being a weed That's that looks true. a lot of weeds look a lot like real plants that have a purpose. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. Then I found it interesting that the Lord said that um, I am handpicking my soldiers mm -hmm. and preparing my army for battle mm -hmm. as the weapons of your warfare are not mm -hmm. colonel, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but mighty in the pulling down of strongholds. Well, let's, let's just back up there though, mm -hmm. to where it say the, the, uh, our weapons are, uh, uh, let's see, weapons of your warfare are not colonel. Mm -hmm. what, what, could we share with our audience what that really means when it says not colonel? Mm -hmm. Does that mean that you, you don't get your shotgun and, and you know, you, it's, <laughs> right. it's a spiritual, mm -hmm. it's a exactly. spiritual, spiritual thing. Yes. And I, I think that would take us to Ephesians 6 mm -hmm. and uh, 12. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. So that would be carnally if we were. Right but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, mm -hmm. against spiritual wickedness in high places. And 13 says, wherefore, oh goodness, wherefore, come on phone, wherefore take unto you the whole armor of God that ye may be able to withstand in the day, in the evil day and having done all to stand and we are in some evil days right now. Mm -hmm. and, and we're going deeper and deeper into them. But then it goes on to tell us um, uh, in 14, says, stand therefore having your loins girt about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. And he's talking about the armor, right. the armor of God. Mm -hmm. 15, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace above all, taking the shield of faith, faith wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts, everything that the devil is gonna shoot at you mm -hmm. uh, of the wicked. Uh, 17, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Mm -hmm. 18, praying always with all prayer and supplication, and not all, everyone includes that as part of the armor, but I think it is a very much so part of the armor. Uh, it's praying mm -hmm. uh, yeah. and, 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 it's the, and supplication in the spirit and watching there unto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints, mm -hmm. for all saints. So God is telling us to be prepared, but that it's not a physical fight, yeah. that this thing is a spiritual, a spiritual fight. And he's telling us how to do it by wearing the armor, his armor. Mm -hmm. And each one of those pieces of armor has a purpose. When you were reading that, what I was thinking in my mind was don't take a knife to a gunfight. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing here. <laughs> we can't fight the devil 
with the tools that he tries to use. We need every piece of that spiritual armor mm -hmm. to overtake That's him. That's right. That's right. That's right. And then in 2 Corinthians 10, Mm -hmm. three, verses three and four, and this is the Passion Translation. Okay. It says, for although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage a military campaign employing human weapons. Wow. Mm -hmm. Using manipulation to achieve our aims. Mm -hmm. yeah. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power mm -hmm. to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's the other thing. The enemy will use other people yes. Yes. to fight against you. Yes, mm -hmm. he will. You know, yes, uh, he will. In a, in a war that's spiritual. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. Agree. That's right. And a lot of times uh, we have to remind ourselves of that. All, I remind myself of that scripture all the time that says we mm -hmm. wrestle not against oh, flesh yes. and blood because when the enemy mm -hmm. uses people mm -hmm. to attack us, mm -hmm. yes. we want to react in the flesh <laughs> yes. to, that and person. The, to that person mm -hmm. instead of to <laughs> what the enemy is using to try mm -hmm. to attack us. So yes. we have to remember and attack mm -hmm. or uh, respond spiritually. Yes, respond spiritually. That's yeah. good. Right, right. That's right, good. Right, right. Amen. That's good. Now, um, the next part, he, he, he talked about uh, warfare, or warfare or not carnal, but then he went on to say, but mighty in the pulling down of strongholds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They must come down and they will come down. They will obey the voice of the Lord as I send forth my prophets and my angel, my angel army to rise above all principalities in the heavenlies and princes in, is that right? Yeah, princes yes. in their high places. Mm -hmm. So I thought uh, 2 Corinthians 10, mm -hmm. 4 through 15, however we might not have time to go through that whole uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, the scripture, but it talks about, I think it's 10 and five, that tells us to pull down those strongholds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, can we share what, what a stronghold is? Mm -hmm. either, either, either one of you, if you would address that for, for mm -hmm. me. A stronghold, uh, my understanding is, uh, or I would describe it as being a mental concept or, or thinking or thought process because mm -hmm. the enemy battles us in our, in our minds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, that could be considered a stronghold. Mm -hmm. But yeah. then you've got strong, spiritual strongholds mm -hmm. that are over cities and yes. um, different regions and they could be strongholds of um, oh, poverty, and mm -hmm. poverty mm -hmm. stricken areas and, or murder. You know, it makes you think about uh, Benny Hinn, I think mm -hmm. when he said he wasn't coming back again, he talked about there being a very black, dark mm -hmm. uh, thing over the city. Mm -hmm. uh, but I'm sorry, I forgot what he, what he called it. Mm -hmm. uh, but it was like a, a heaviness. And uh, he said he wasn't coming back again. So I, I said that because to me, that's a, a type of stronghold. Exactly. That those of us who are saints in yeah. the city, yeah. uh, God would show to us that same thing and, and begin to tear those things down. Yeah, mm -hmm. I would pray that maybe he got with some of the leaders, hopefully before yeah. he left yeah. to share more of that in specific mm -hmm. right. so that strategies can be created right. and right. prayer can go forth mm -hmm. right. to open up I, our city. Yeah, mm -hmm. I do agree that it's a mental, a mental standpoint or state of mind like Prophet has said. In, in the Amplified again it says we are destroying sophisticated arguments mm -hmm. and proud stances. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's exactly what a stronghold is, something that we are too stubborn or too proud to let down as opposed to what's right. Mm -hmm. and, it, and something that we will, or it says here, that is exalted before God. So whatever mm -hmm. we think or whatever we consider to be right, yes. we're exalting that above God. And Which that's never good. <laughs> no. Yeah, never good. Mm -hmm. Um. First Thessalonians 5 and, and uh, verse 6 and 8. Uh, if, if you would look that up, uh, Pastor Terry, while I read this, it, the Lord goes on to say, so be alert, 
be sober, mm -hmm. be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, is roaring like a lion, roaming and seeking to and fro for those he can devour. Mm -hmm. And he will devour them, says the Lord. Now, I think you also had a scripture pertaining to that too, though, didn't you? The scripture that I had for that one was what we've already discussed, okay. e uh, Ephesians okay. 6 and 12. Okay, mm -hmm. all right, all right. Um, were you able to, to get? Sure. It? Okay, could you read that, please? Right, and you said 1 Thessalonians 5, yeah. 6 through 8? Uh-huh. Okay, it says, So then, let us not sleep in spiritual indifference as the rest of the world does, mm -hmm. but let us keep wide awake, alert and cautious, and let us be sober, self-controlled, calm and wise. Mm -hmm. For those who sleep, sleep at night, mm -hmm. but those who are drunk, get drunk at night. But since we believers belong to the day, let us be sober, mm -hmm. having put on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of confident assurance of salvation. Okay. So what we should be people that are, are serious about what's going on and mm -hmm. uh, sensible about the things that are happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I had wanted to talk about uh, the abortion piece, but I want to go way back to when uh, the abortion was approved, like about 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was all because, uh, I, I would say, I probably was somewhere still shaking it on down but the, 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 the saints, <clears throat> we didn't stand up. Mm -hmm. Also, that's how prayer got taken out of the schools. One woman, and because we were somewhere asleep. That's just my opinion. Right. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So, go ahead. Or I was gonna say, or when you when you said shaking it on down, or 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 being sleep or being drunk means again not being aware. We've we've dulled our senses to what's going on That's around right. us. That's right. And I like that the scripture also incorporated the the weapons of our where of our warfare that we spoke about in the last scripture, the breastplate and the mm -hmm. helmet and things like that. But when we are unaware or when we're under the influence of mm -hmm, something, mm -hmm. then those weapons do us no good because we're not thinking about using them, we're thinking about something else. Right, mm -hmm. right, that's good, very good. Uh, then it went on, he went on to say, my soldiers must not break rank. So know your place. We need to know our place. We need to who we, know who we are mm -hmm. in Christ. Know your enemies. We need to know who our enemies are. And those people who come against us, the enemy may be using them, but they are definitely not our enemy. It's, it's the, in, the devil, right. to be pr pr quite clear. Uh, it says, my soldiers must not break rank. So know your place, know your enemies, and his strategy so you will not be a uh, casualty of war mm. or spoil, a spoil upon mm -hmm. in his hand. Mm -hmm. His time is short as my great army expands, marches across this earth in victory, says God. O oh, death, where is your sting? Or, uh, or grave, where is your victory? Then he went on to say, where are my watchmen? Where are his watchmen? Are you watching? Are you on alert? Are you ready? This is the time to be on your post to warn and protect my people. Mm -hmm. Awake, awake, and hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Okay. Well, I thought I had that. Mm -hmm. hey, come on, paper. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, what did I say last? Um, the Spirit of the Lord is saying, I am giving you our out assignments, new mandates, new instructions, new orders, and even a new post, not like the old, but new strategies 
we need, we need the Holy Ghost to Amen. give us new ways right. of doing things because the old ones will not work on their own slot that the devil is planning. Mm -hmm. So the things that the devil is planning for us, we need strategies, we need ways of doing certain things mm -hmm. uh, based on what God would help us to, yeah. to use. Awake and hear, awake and listen, awake, receive your instructions, mm -hmm. says the Lord, mm -hmm. because I will feed them to you day by day, just as I feed the sparrow, says the Lord. Mm -hmm. Be ready, girt up, clothed, and dressed as a true warrior, and let's go get, the, get what belongs to us. <clears throat> let's go get our stuff. Let's mm -hmm. go collect the bounty and reap my harvest, says the Lord of the living God. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. Now, what I want to do, I just went ahead and read through that because what I want to do is for you, Prophet Merlin, mm -hmm. to begin to share with the audience and with us uh, how um, Ezekiel 38 ties into this prophetic word mm -hmm. that God gave to you. Mm -hmm. Well, Ezekiel 38 is um, a war that is one of the wars that's or one of the next thing, or events that's supposed to happen uh, in the world to trigger the Antichrist mm -hmm. and, and him being released. And so it's also on, on God's time clock when this war will occur. And right now, and with the, with the prophetic word and probably some of the other ones I've been getting, God has been saying for us to be awake, to be alert, to, be, to know where our, what our position is, know what our place is, to be prayerful, and part of being alert, especially as being watchmen, is watching the news, watching the things that are happening and transpiring, and especially keeping our eyes on the Middle East, mm -hmm. because the Middle East is like the time clock, okay. and Israel is like you know God's time clock. Um, they always say, watch, they call them the fig tree, watch the fig tree, mm -hmm. and so the fig tree is blooming, it's blossoming, it's, it's at peace, it, it, you know, it's never really been at real peace, but it's at a place where they're not really in a war, mm -hmm. but they're always defending themselves. And that's, that's why the Bible says there's always gonna be wars or rumors or wars. Well, there's three wars that are, um, that are supposed to occur during the last days. And we've entered in, you have a definition of what they call the last days and then the end of, end of this age. Um, so the world is really not gonna come to an end. There's just the end of a dispensation or end of a time period mm -hmm. where one thing will stop and something else will start. And so the church age will end when the Antichrist comes on the scene. And then when Jesus comes at the, the Battle of Armageddon, which is the last war, that's to occur at the end of the seven year tribulation. Mm -hmm. So the Ezekiel 38 war is a war that's supposed to begin or start or time clock the seven year tribulation. Well, some and have some of those wars already There's started. one war, Psalm 83, if you read that um, psalm, mm -hmm. there was a six-day war that Israel won. And that war, has been, was, um, that war has passed. The second war is Ezekiel 38. The third okay. war is going to be the Battle of Armageddon. Mm -hmm. And then after it was the Battle of Armageddon, there's a thousand-year reign of Christ. Mm -hmm. and, um, and then Satan is, uh, he is actually put in a pit for a thousand years. But so, they do, you know, there's gonna be one last time that he's gonna be released. Mm -hmm. And so there will be one more war. And in the Bible, if you look at Revelations chapter 20, it describes that war mm -hmm. and they, they talk about it as being a, a Gog and Magog, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. it's not the Ezekiel 38 war. And that's why there's so much confusion with this particular war. Oh, I got a question. So you say in Revelation, it talks about Gog and Magog, mm -hmm. but uh, also um, Ezekiel 38 talks mm -hmm. about Gog and Magog. That's correct. So are, are these two different Gog and Magog? Or? The Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38, Gog is a chief. He's a chief uh, that's going to be the leader of this uh, coalition or this alliance that's being formed for the uh, Ezekiel 38 war to happen. And they're all supposed to come down from the north okay. to attack Israel. Okay. And that's just on the Middle East. The one in Revelations uh, 
20, it's more of a, well, they say concept, a spiritual concept, very similar to what was happening in Ezekiel 38, but it is not the same. In Ezekiel um, uh, 38 and then Revelations 20, Revelations 20 is not just against, I mean, it's not, um, it's not the North coming down after Israel. Okay. That particular war is whatever is left in the world that Satan is out to come out and has his last ditch time to take, I don't know, I guess take people to hell with him <laughs> <laughs> before it's all over and said and done with. Right. And so, there are several kind of interpretations much so. to that. That's why it can be a little bit... It, Confusing. Confusing, yes. Yeah, I think because, that's why we wanted to talk about yeah. Ezekiel 38, because it's not the Battle of Armageddon. Mm -hmm, and right. some people say that it is. Mm -hmm. Well, no, if you really know the Bible prophecy, it's, it's, it's not. Mm -hmm. It's not time for the Battle of Armageddon, because it's at the uh, Battle of Armageddon occurs at the end of a seven-year tribulation period, and it involves the whole world, right? not could, just the Middle could, East. Could we stop mm -hmm. right there and you hold, hold that thought? Mm -hmm. We're going to pick it up on the with the next taping. And so we just want to say to our audience, uh, we hope that you are getting uh, as much meat out of this as, as we are while the prophet is delivering and, and while Pastor Terry is giving her input. Uh, but tune in for the next session uh, and, and we will be continuing this conversation or this discussion. Mm -hmm. uh, but we thank you for tuning in with, for this session. Yeah. And so we're going to say to you, join us in the next session.